Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to create your hardcover cover for Ingram Spark in Canva. To create your hardcover cover for Ingram Spark, you are going to need to generate a cover template in Ingram Spark. And in order to do that, you will need an ISBN for your book. You can either pay for an ISBN from Bowker or you can get a free one from Ingram Spark. So if you already got your ISBN from Bowker, then you're set for that. But if you're using the free one from Ingram Spark, then you will need to log into Ingram Spark and start adding your title so that you can get that ISBN number. So I'm going to walk you through that right now. I have Ingram Spark pulled up and I'm just going to click on add title and I'm going to do print book only for do you have your files ready to upload? I'll click on no, but I will enter my title information and submit files later. And for what would you like to do? I'll do print, distribute, and sell book. And then I'll click continue. In here, I'll just start entering my title information. So I will enter my title here. I'll pick my language. And then down here, I'm going to click receive a free ISBN owned by Ingram Spark. And here you can read the note that just explains about the free ISBN. So I'm going to click, yes, I want a complimentary ISBN. And now I have my ISBN here, so I can just grab it and copy it. And then I'll come down here to Tools and Resources, and I'll click on that. And then I'm going to choose Cover Template Generator. So here I'll just paste the ISBN that I just copied. And I'll select my trim size, whatever I want that to be. I'm going to do eight and a half by eight and a half. And then I'll pick color for my interior and premium color. And then I'm going to do hardback and case laminate. And I'm going to pick gloss for my cover finish. You can pick gloss or matte. And then I'll enter my page count here. And for my file type, I'm going to pick a PDF. And then I'll just enter my email address. And for the price, if you want to enter your price here, you can. But I like to leave it blank in case I want to change the price later. And then I'll just click Submit. In a few minutes, I'll get an email from Ingram Spark with the PDF template. Here's the email, so I'll just scroll down to the bottom and I'm just going to download the attachment. And now if we look at the attachment at the very bottom left corner, you can see that it says document size is 23 by 14.5. That is important to note because we're going to use that when we create our Canva project. Now I'm going to go into Canva and I'm going to create a design. And on the left, I'm going to pick custom size. I'm going to change the units to inches. And for the width and height, I'm going to enter that width and height that we just saw, which was 23 by 14.5. And then I'll click Create New Design. Now I'm going to rename my project. And I'm going to go to Uploads, Upload Files. And I'm going to grab that PDF that I just downloaded from Ingram Spark and I'll click open. Now I'm just going to click on it over here in designs and that'll just drop it in. This is the template for my cover. And if you look at it, you'll see the blue part is actually the bleed. So there is way more bleed in this than there is for the paperback book. So that's why hardcovers can be a bit more tricky than the paperbacks because you're going to have to have a lot of extra background that's going to wrap around the book. So all of the blue is going to need to be whatever's in the background, like whether you have trees or a wall or whatever you have for the background of your book. And this blue part right here is the hinge. So that's the part that's going to be kind of like folded in on itself. 
and that will also need to be an extension of the background. And I'll show you what I mean when we drop the art in. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually duplicate the barcode here because we're going to want to be able to place it on top of everything that we put for the cover. So I'm going to grab this whole thing here and I'm just going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to click the crop button up here. And now I'm just going to crop everything except for the barcode. I'm just going to get kind of close to it, but since we're so zoomed out, I'm just going to kind of do the best I can and click done. And then I'm going to zoom in more and do another cropping so that I can really get all of that pink out. And then I'll click done. And then I'll just place it back where it was. And now I want to set up some guides just so that once I drop my art in, I can really see where those bleed zones are going to be and where the edge of the art needs to be. And if you don't see these rulers up here and over on the side here, then you're going to want to go to File, Settings, Show Rulers and Guides, and make sure that's checked on. Then you can just mouse over the ruler and click and drag and you can pull a guide out. And I'm just going to put a guide for each of the edges of the blue. So the edge here and the edge here. So the edge of the document and then the edge of where the bleed starts. And when you're doing the middle one, it's going to try to snap to the middle. So you can hold down control on your keyboard while you're dragging it, and then you'll be able to put it wherever you want because that disables snapping. Now let's make sure our guides are locked because we don't want to accidentally move them around. So I'm going to go to File, Settings, Lock Guides. Now we can drop in our art. So I'm going to go over here and go to Uploads, and I'm gonna to go to Upload Files, and I'm gonna grab my cover art, and I'll click Open, and I'm gonna click on that cover art to drop it in. And now I'm going to place it onto the book, and as you can see, it's not gonna be perfect because this is the same one that I used for the paperback book. So you can see that a lot of this flower stuff is going to get cut off because if you look at the line down here, see how much is going to get cut off. The other parts are not too bad. The bunny silhouette's going to get cut off here, but it's not that big of a deal. I could move this to the left to bring a little more of this in and then he probably wouldn't get cut off there. And then I would just crop some of this off. But I'd really have to look and make sure that the mouse looks centered here. So as you can see, the spine would be right here and the hinge would be here. So this part would be kind of folded onto itself. But I don't think it would look right because a lot of these flowers would get cut off. So I could either take the art back into whatever program I made it in and extend the art. So I would extend the flowers to come down more so I could move this up. I could also just bring it into Photoshop and do something like content aware fill or use the clone stamp. And there's also a feature that you can use in Canva, but I don't usually get great results from it. It works much better in Photoshop, but I'll show it to you anyways. So if I click on the art and then I go to edit over here, I can pick magic expand. And this is basically the same as Content Aware Fill in Photoshop, but it works much better in Photoshop. And that's not to say that it never looks weird in Photoshop. Sometimes it does, but usually it works pretty good for me. So I'm going to pick Free Form, and I'm just going to grab this little corner handle here and pull it down right to the edge there. And then I'll click Expand. And that's actually not too bad of a job because all of this is gonna get wrapped around anyway, so it doesn't need to look perfect. But let's look at the different variations too. So this one looks a little more kind of like faded back. That one looks a lot better, looks like grass. 
this one doesn't look too bad. So I think I'll go with this third one here and then I'll click done and I'll close that out. And now that'll be able to wrap around the book. The only other thing that I don't really love is that we don't really have enough green here because the green is supposed to be behind the title. And if this is the top edge of the book up here, then I really only have this itty bitty part. So I'm going to size this down and then let's kind of pull this maybe like here. And then let's do the magic expand again. So I'm going to go to edit and I'll come over here and go to magic expand and make sure freeform is picked. And then I'm just going to pull this handle over and I'll click expand. So these are our options. This one does not look great at all. Let's try the next one. Eh, a little bit better. That looks really weird. I guess that's okay. But I'm not, I'm not going to actually publish this. I'm just kind of doing it to show you. So if I was actually doing this to publish it, then I would use Photoshop and use Content Aware Fill, and it would come out much better. So I'm going to pick that one, and I'll do Done. So now if we look at it, remember, you got to look at this square that's within the guides and just make sure each of those has everything you want in it and no important elements are cut off. So these look pretty good. And I'm going to just add my other elements here. So I'm not going to go through it too detailed because I do have it in a lot of other videos. You can actually just check out the paperback cover in Ingram Spark to see how I did everything, like the title and the description on the back and my picture and all that. So I won't go through all of the details on how to do that, but I'll just add it here really fast to show you. I finished designing my cover and now I need to make sure that I add that barcode. So if you remember, we isolated the barcode as its own layer. So I'm just going to click on one of the elements of my book. It doesn't matter which one. And then I'm going to go to position, layers, and I'm going to find that barcode here. So here it is right here, and I'm going to just pull it to the top. And now you can see it on the cover and I'm just going to place it wherever it makes sense for my book. So it kind of like lines up with stuff, but I think I want to add more white around it. So I'm just going to make a rectangle. So I'll press the letter R on my keyboard to bring up a rectangle and I'm going to change the color to white. And then I'll just resize that and I'll place it over the barcode and then I'll go to position, arrange, and I'll send it backwards so it goes behind the barcode and now I can size it a little better and I can also grab the rectangle and then hold down shift and grab the barcode and then group them so that way now I can move it around and align it how I want so I'm going to align it with the edge of my little text box here so it'll snap to that and then I'll just maybe align it to the bottom of this text box. I could even make it a little bit bigger so that it like perfectly aligns with the top of this text box and the bottom of this text box. And now I'll zoom out and as you can see now my cover is done. And you do also just want to make sure you zoom in really good so you can do command plus and you have to make sure that none of the blue is showing. So actually you can see right here that I have some blue showing here. So I'm just gonna pull this down so that I make sure I cover all of that. And if it's snapping weird, remember you can hold down control and then you can really get that to where you need it. And then I'll look up here. So I have it up here too. So I'm actually gonna just pull it like that. So now I have it covering all of the blue and I can zoom out and now it is good to go. So the next step is I'm just going to do share, download, and I'm gonna pick PDF print, flatten PDF. Make sure you do not check crop marks and bleed or include notes. For the color profile, Ingram Spark does require CMYK, but if you don't have Canva Pro, then you can pick RGB, 
And then I have a tool on my website that will convert it to CMYK for you. And I'll show you how to use that. It's free. So I'll just click download and I'll save it on my computer. And then I'll just go to heathercash.com and scroll down to where you see Ingram Spark free tool and then click fix my PDF. And I'll have a link in the description also. Here you can just click choose file and I'll pick the cover file I just exported from Canva and I'll click open. And then it's just gonna start converting it. And this tool is also great for your inside pages of your PDF because if you create your inside pages in Canva and export them as CMYK, they're not going to actually pass Ingram Spark. They're gonna get an error. They're gonna get this file contains curves and PDF contains ICC color profiles. So you can use my converter for that as well. And now I'll click download mousecover.pdf. And you'll see when you download from the tool on my website that your file is gonna have a new name. It's gonna have underscore PDF X in the name, and that's gonna be the file that you're gonna to wanna to upload to Ingram Spark because that's the converted file. So your original file you'll still have, and then the new file is gonna have that same name, underscore PDF X. So you'll upload that one to Ingram Spark. So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. If you're working on your own children's book, join my creativity club on Facebook where we share our projects and support each other and help each other to reach our goals. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.